Us Irish have dreamt of plenty of inventions, from the bacon rasher to the cream cracker and even the flavoured potato crisp. No, really. Now, much as I would love to chat about those all day, in line with this channel's main content focus, let's look instead at five fantastic Irish inventions from the worlds of technology, science and business. After all, an Irishman even invented the word entrepreneur. Richard Cantillon came up with it in 1755 when he was living in France. But he doesn't make the list. Let's take a look at who does. Born in Belfast and educated at Cambridge, William Thompson set the template for many great Irishmen to follow. He was part mathematician, part physicist and part engineer. Thompson achieved quite a bit in his lifetime. For example, he established the absolute temperature scale, still known as the Greece Kelvin. He was also responsible for figuring out how to make the first transatlantic cable work. Thompson was consulted for help solving the electrical and engineering dilemmas facing the cable project. He used analogies drawn from physics to solve many of the crucial problems. Thompson developed a complete system for operating a submarine telegraph that was capable of sending a character every 3.5 seconds. He patented the key element of his system, the mirror galvanometer, in 1858. This device is a sensitive electrical indicating instrument and was used to detect the extremely weak currents received through long submarine cables. The cable ran between Valentia Island on the west coast of Ireland to Heart's Content in Newfoundland. On the 16th of August 1858, Queen Victoria and US President James Buchanan exchanged telegraphic pleasantries, inaugurating the first transatlantic cable connecting British North America to Ireland. It wasn't exactly WhatsApp. The Queen's 98-word greeting took almost 16 hours to send through the 3,200km cable. <laughs> The first electric tattoo machine was invented in New York City by Samuel F. O'Reilly and patented December 8th, 1891. O'Reilly's parents were recent Irish immigrants to the US. His invention used a high-speed reciprocating motor to drive a single needle. O'Reilly's design was based on Thomas Edison's earlier invention, the electric pen. The electric pen did not use ink, rather it perforated holes in a master form which then became a stencil. O'Reilly discovered that Edison's machine could be modified and used to introduce ink into the skin and later patented a tube and needle system to provide an ink reservoir. It was made from iron, steel and brass and O'Reilly would become the leading tattoo artist of his era. His background from the Navy helped him attract clientele from the ships when they would stay in New York. And here he is in a tattoo ad from a New York newspaper in 1897. John Jolly was a scientist from County Offaly whose inventions included the first commercial application of colour photography. But radiotherapy was perhaps his most impactful invention. After Marie and Pierre Curie discovered radioactivity and radium, people started exploring the medical uses of radioactivity. It could cause cancer, yet could also be used to burn and thus hopefully kill a cancerous growth. The brutal technique of using radium itself was the basis for early radiotherapy. Jolly's idea for an alternative treatment was driven by the fact that the radium approach was hugely expensive as well as hugely dangerous. His big innovation was to use the radon gas that it gave off rather than the radium itself. This emanation could be collected and the amount or dose of radiation could then be controlled. Jolly's Dublin method, as it was called, was soon widely adopted. Marie Curie even used it in France to prepare radiation treatments during the First World War. Frank Pantridge was a cardiologist from County Down who became known as the father of emergency medicine. He recognised the importance of early treatment and he helped introduce modern CPR. But his big invention was the portable defibrillator. In 1965, he installed his first version in a Belfast ambulance. It weighed 70 kilograms and operated from car batteries. But by 1968, he had designed an instrument weighing only 3 kilograms using NASA technology. This updated version could be used safely by members of the public. Pantridge maintained that everywhere a fire extinguisher was found, one of his devices should be present. It has gone on to save countless lives. 
Oddly, his invention was initially met with ridicule in the United Kingdom but was taken up almost immediately in the United States. He also had a reputation for being somewhat complex. His obituary in The Guardian said he could be cantankerous, gruff, even rude, and yet witty and generous. For him to like someone, he had to respect them, and he could then be a very loyal friend. Pantridge did receive some belated acclaim back home. There was a blue plaque at the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast, and the City of Lisburn commissioned a statue of Pantridge, which stands outside the Consul's offices at the Lagan Valley Island Centre. <laughs> Okay, this is more of a discovery than an invention, but it's a phenomenal story and I really couldn't leave it out. Jocelyn Bell Burnell was working on her PhD at Cambridge in 1967 when she discovered a previously unknown object in the universe, which would later become known as pulsars. She had been monitoring quasars, which the internet tells me are galactic nuclei powered by a supermassive black hole, when she discovered a series of extremely regular radio pulses. She consulted her advisor, Anthony Hewish, we'll hear more about him later, and their team spent the next few months eliminating possible sources of the pulses, which they dubbed LGM for Little Green Men, in reference to the distant possibility that they might have been messages from aliens. One of the images from the radio pulses was then immortalised on a Joy Division album cover. In fact, I'm pretty sure I had a t-shirt of this many years ago. Using pulsars, scientists can test some of the most fundamental theories in physics, detect gravitational waves, navigate the cosmic ocean, and who knows, maybe even communicate with those little green men one day. Jocelyn's discovery of pulsars was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1974. But she didn't receive the prize. Instead, her supervisors took the acclaim. She has finally received some of her due recognition and was awarded a $3 million prize in 2018, which she donated to a charity that supports underrepresented groups in physics. <laughs>